In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph more than all his other sons, for he was the son of his old age. And he had a coat with long sleeves made for him. But his brothers, seeing how his father loved him more than all his other sons, came to hate him so much that they could not say a civil word to him. His brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. Then Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers with the flock at Shechem? Come, I am going to send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they made a plot among themselves to put him to death. Here comes the man of dreams, they said to one another. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into some well. We can say that a wild beast devoured him. Then we shall see what becomes of his dreams. But Reuben heard, and he saved him from their violence. We must not take his life, he said. Shed no blood, said Reuben to them. Throw him into this well in the wilderness, but do not lay violent hands on him, intending to save him from them and to restore him to his father. So when Joseph reached his brothers, they pulled off his coat, the coat with long sleeves that he was wearing, and catching hold of him, they threw him into the well, an empty well with no water in it. They then sat down to eat. Looking up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites who were coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, tragacanth, balsam, and resin, which they were taking down into Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What do we gain by killing our brother and covering up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, but let us not do any harm to him. After all, he is our brother and our own flesh. His brothers agreed. Now some Midianite merchants were passing, and they drew Joseph out of the well. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty silver pieces, and these men took Joseph to Egypt. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. God called down a famine on the land, he broke the staff that supported them. He had sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. His feet were put in chains. His neck was bound with iron. Until what he said came to pass, and the Lord's word proved him true. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Then the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free, making him master of his house and ruler of all he possessed. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son. Everyone who believes in him has eternal life. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a winepress in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, threshed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next, he sent some more servants. 
this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. When they heard his parables, the chief priests and the scribes realized he was speaking about them. But though they would have liked to arrest him, they were afraid of the crowds who looked on him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. During my younger days, whenever I heard today's gospel, I often asked myself, what kind of tenants are these? They seem to have forgotten that their role and responsibility as tenants in that vineyard was to till it and pay what was due the owner. And because of that, it's no surprise that they thought it was justified for them to not only refuse paying what was due, but also justified to even thresh kill and even stone those the owner sent to collect what was his. But before we judge these tenants too quickly or harshly, this gospel, like all other scriptures, invites and challenges us to look at ourselves and ask, have I been like the tenants myself? This world and all that is in it, creation, you and I, and life itself, do not belong to us. They belong to God and have been made and entrusted to us. Just as how the owner in today's gospel prepared the vineyard and leased it to the tenants. To care, to be servants, to be stewards of these gifts. But like the tenants, we often forget not only this fact, but also our role and responsibility in this bigger picture called life which explains perhaps why it is so easy to plunder creation, to use, to misuse, and to even abuse one another, all for one's own greed, in the name of progress and development. Doing such things as these only makes us assume the role of owner instead of the role of steward. In short, we have become no different from the tenants in today's gospel, or even of Joseph's brothers, whose role and responsibility was to care and protect each other. But because of their pride and their jealousy, they wanted to kill Joseph instead. The season of Lent is a time for us to again recognize and remember our role and our responsibility in this bigger picture of life. And that is this world, all that is in it, creation, you and I, and life itself belongs to God, not to us. They have been created and entrusted to us as gifts to be stewards over. And so how do we do this? From today's psalm, it is to remember the wonders the Lord has done. In other words, to always live a life of gratitude. Because gratitude reminds us that nothing of what we have is ours to own. Gratitude reminds us that all of these belong to God and is to be used to glorify God. Having such an attitude helps to remind us that there should not be such a thing as greed, jealousy, and even selfishness to rule our actions and our relationships with one another. Let us therefore strive during this season of Lent that we may recognize our role, our responsibility as stewards, not owners of this world or of one another. May we be like Reuben or Judah in today's first reading to always find ways to protect, to care for the least, the last, 
and lost in society. Because only when we do this, we not only remember our role and responsibility, but we also give God all the glory that is due to Him. And so, recognizing that all of us are God's children, let us pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.